Hey there, YouTube. Um, I'm going to start with something real quick and get it out of the way. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. I want to apologize to you guys because it's been almost a month since I posted a video and that's not good enough. Um, I am dedicated to making this channel better. Um, it's not where I want it to be right now. Uh, with working night shifts, I just tend to crash on my days off and I don't get anything done. Um, that's going to change. Uh, <laughs> I've promised shit that I haven't delivered on, but that is going to change, and I hope most of you guys stick around for that. Um, but I've gotten more work done on the bow, and I've gotten past kind of that block I had with it, mostly. <laughs> and we are, we're getting in the home stretch to where we're going to see a finished product. So I got the guy right here, where he is now better angled and foam filled mostly um so let's talk about the angle on the arms because i didn't yammer on enough about that in the last video um so yeah everything i've looked at uh the bow was kind of supposed to be as straight as it was uh these pieces were way too angled um the way i had it previously but uh and they're still too angled um but yeah, it was kind of right, more or less. But it wasn't what I wanted in it. It wasn't what I was happy with. So I had to go in uh, and cut the skeletal structure significantly down to be able to have enough play to angle these back. Um, as a note for anybody who's working on another Peppercura Hanzo bow, since I have decided to start posting the Peppercura patterns that I used, um, I'll repost them in the... In the the description below i mean I've, I've warned you guys they're terrible i've warned you but if you've watched all of my videos then you will have seen the problems i ran into and how i fixed them which is about the best advice i can give on anything to do with this guy uh so a further piece of advice when it comes to uh angling these as to the choices i made and why and you know take it as a data point, decide whether or not it worked, uh, is initially for, you know, the canon straight in-game uh, model of Hanzo's bow, you've got this point here, and you've got the... There we go. Friggin' mirror. <laughs> uh, those two points don't line up when it's straight. Uh, I have them lined up with how I've curved it back, um, to get kind of a when the bow is being drawn curve. It, it makes the piece look better. It looks more satisfying as far as I'm concerned, and it helps adjust the size issue maybe just a little bit. Maybe not a lot, but, you know, hopefully enough that it doesn't look patently ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, they're not... They don't line up when it's straight, but I have them lined up to try to get a better curve. Um... Yeah, I also cut down the skeleton in the handle because the handle was crooked. I can't remember if I ever mentioned that in a previous video. But yeah, it was kind of skitty wampus off to the side. Now, unfortunately, astute viewers will notice that I kind of had to remove uh, that brace piece down there to uh, accomplish that. Uh, I had that attached pretty sturdy, so removing it kind of shredded the piece. But it was that, you know, one that I wasn't quite happy with that I'm thinking about 3D printing. I've been talking with a, a local prop maker, which I'm still astonished there's any local prop makers out here. We are in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Maybe we're not, but you can see it from there. Talking to a local prop maker who's got a 3D printer, I'm going to try to 3D print the piece, which, I mean... I is because it's just so awkward in Peppacura, and that'll help structurally, and it'll be so much simpler and so much sharper and just generally better looking. <laughs> so I'll I'll have to get that taken care of before I can get that piece on there. Um, 
So yeah, that's mostly talking about the skeletal work I had to do on the bow to adjust the issues I was having. Uh, and then for filling it with foam, most people fill models with AB foam, which I did not have um, and have never worked with before. What I have worked with before is that insulation spray foam that they sell at pretty much any hardware store and at Walmart. So that's what I filled this guy up with, and it seems to have worked out pretty well. There was a little bit of user error, but you can hardly blame the material for that. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty it's satisfyingly solid. Why? And since the bow is going to be like painted and sealed, you know, I mean, this stuff's built to seal by itself, but there really shouldn't be an issue with uh, deterioration. Uh, and it's done a, a really good job helping hold everything together. The the entire piece feels sturdier. Um, it, it has assuaged all my reservations about the structural stability of the piece. Why am I trying to use big words when I'm stupid tired? It's just a bad idea. Um, so yeah, it's... There are a few places places where it worked fantastically, like these, where they've just got like a little bit of bulge behind them. Uh, they look so much better now. Um, makes the bow look beefy and muscular. Um, there are a few places where they didn't work out as well. Like this bulged a little bit. Uh, I may just trim that down a tad so the sides are flat again. I mean, that's the part that's going to have the wrapping over it, so I'm... I'll do some more thinking on that as to whether or not that'll really be visible or if it'll matter. Um, and I did overfill this section, so it has split a little bit. For the most part, I didn't have an issue with that, but I overfilled it a little bit here and uh, also in the handle. The handle kind of split a little bit and popped this cylinder out, so it's not going to take too much to fix. It's fixable. Uh, when I was talking about adding more detail to the bow that was in the skin and not the model, I think I'm going to basically add the detail the same way, where I'm kind of going to just draw or etch it into the surface. Uh, and when I say etch, uh, the other thing I've decided to do uh, when it comes to surfacing this guy is I'm going to mostly use gesso. I'm going to use Bondo on the parts where he's roughest and he really needs it, but gesso on most of it, like, um, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to cite specific examples. But I feel like 75% of it, just a, a few robust coats of gesso and a little bit of sanding will be adequate. And then Bondo just to, in places where it's worse, where it's, you know, just scruffier. Um, so that shouldn't take too long. Now, I don't want to promise you guys something I can't deliver, but I'm going to make an effort to do a lot more work on this as quickly as possible. I mean, I have other projects I would like to start putting time into and start telling you guys about, because a lot of them, you know, are half or more done, and some of them have been that way for a, a long, long while. Um, so, I want to get this wrapped up and awesome and, you know, ready to show off to you uh, as quick as possible. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try to make more awesome stuff. It'll incrementally get to that point. Um, we're just at a little bit of a slump right now. Let's pull out a bit. 